Welcome back, everyone. There are many files that you can import into our slicers, 3MF, object, STL, step files, but a unique one is the SVG file. I've touched on this file type briefly in other videos when converting 2D to 3D images. There are many things you can do with them. What is an SVG file? Let's start simple. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. These types of files are very unique. In design applications, they are images that should not lose detail when you enlarge or shrink them down. They're versatile images that are used in many uh, places like websites, charts, and graphs. In our slicers, they are similar to 2D applications, but they have some interesting characteristics. So how does it work in Bamboo Studio? When you import an SVG file, they default to a model with a height of 10 millimeters. You'll see an outline of the image you imported. The SVG file will have a top and bottom and sides, but the outline pattern will always be on the opposite sides. First import should be top and bottom. If we slice the file, you won't see much, not even the outline of your image. So the SVG file is like Schrodinger's cat. It exists and does not exist until acted upon. Acting on it includes enlarging sections or painting them. Enlarging some parts can be found in a previous video. I'll link that in the description. So these SVG files can do some pr pretty cool things. Again, first know that the image is on either side of the model, but depending on how you paint it, you can have it do different things. So if I paint just one side, then slice, you're going to see it show up on that side. If I paint both sides, it stands to reason both sides get painted. So again, if I slice, you'll see it on either side. Now, when I paint these, it brings the part into existence. And the part that was once invisible is now visible because I acted upon it. The rest of the model is treated as a solid part. So you could change your infill, you can remove your infill, you can add walls or remove walls. Closing the loop, front, back, and in between. Okay, so there is another interesting thing that you can do with SVG files. So let's actually knock down our infill to zero. So what that means is when we go to slice, we're just looking at the walls, the floor and ceiling of this. We're gonna switch over to objects process. Now, from here, when you're looking at your parts, every single one of these parts is a section of this model. So let's go down to the bottom. So when I click on each of these, a part will highlight. Now, a way where you can paint something pretty easily for the entire part is to select the part, and then you would select your, um, your color from your AMS. Easiest way is actually just to hit the number corresponding to it. So usually one through nine is pretty easy. If you go above that, uh, you may have to select it manually. So I'll show you the manual way. If you click on your color here, you can then just select it here. Or what you can do is you can just select it and then just hit the number two. So every time I click on one of these, a section lights up and I just painted the whole part. So if I were to slice this now, the slice will show that the entire part from the top and the bottom and everything in between is now colored in. Now, since it's now considered a part, it will also get a wall. So what I will do is I'll actually paint all of this just through their parts and show you what it looks like. So 
So let's slice this. And now we have the top and then everything in between. Now, normally I wouldn't print something like this, considering that the most important part would be the top and the bottom. But even something like this would take about 42 uh, filament changes. And you can make it even worse if you print it in the wrong orientation. So the example would be this particular print, uh, 42 color changes, and it's roughly three hours. If I were to just rotate this 90 degrees, and then slice this plate, we've gone from three hours to about 17 and a half. And this is how many color changes you're going through. So in this case, 502 versus 40 something. Now, the other thing that you can do within these are as follows. So let's actually rotate this back. Split the difference. Okay. So let's say you have a really fancy build plate which has textures or certain colors and you want it to show up on both sides of your print. What we can do is we can actually cut this and then have it print the opposite side. So what we'll do is cut this. Now as a word of advice, you'll actually want to not bother with painting anything until you make the cut. So right now, even though I cloned this from one of the other ones, all of these colors will disappear and I'll have to repaint it after the cut. So if you know you're going to cut it, just cut it first and then paint it after. All right, so what we'll do is click on our model. You can hit the C key or just go right up to cut. And we're going to go to add connectors. All right, now I did release a video on uh, the cut tool, but I'll go over it again. So you can choose your type. So a plug would effectively give you something to work with. It will print with this plug sticking out. Typically, I like using the dowel only because it will print these pegs. Uh, well, you can print the pegs separately instead of build, um, having them baked into the model. And you'll have some options with those pegs. All right, so I'm going to go to dowel. You can choose your type. I'm just going to use circle. And you can make the adjustments here. So again, I didn't make any Z height adjustments. So the entire model is 10 millimeters. I'm going to split it in half. So it'll be five and five. So we just have to make sure that this isn't above five. So your depth ratio, you can make that whatever you want. Just don't go above your hole. If you make it too large, you'll start getting error messages. So I'll set this back to 3.5. And when it comes to the tolerances, so this section here, if I set the tolerance higher, it will add to whatever this is. So let's say my depth ratio is 3.5. My tolerance is, let's say, 1.5, but the model is only 5 on either side. It will actually puncture through, so just keep that in mind. Also, when it comes down to the size portion, if I make the adjustments here, so this is a diameter of 10 millimeters, the tolerance size is the pegs that we're going to be printing. I'm giving myself some wiggle room. It doesn't really matter much. If you put this as a zero, it's a press fit. If your filament expands a little bit, you're going to run into an issue where it may not fit. So you either have to reprint the pegs or you may have to file them down. All right, so enough talking. Let's start placing these down. I'm going to keep it simple. And place our pegs. And right now I'm just doing the corners and spots where they can tightly fit together. All right, so now that we have these placed, if you wanted to see how it looks on the other side, you don't really have to do this since it's the same on either side, but you can press and hold, and when you lift up, you'll see the other side, or you can use your camera control. So again, uh, control one is the top of this, control two is the bottom. All right, so I'm going to do control seven, which will give us a nice metric view. All right, so once that looks good, we'll hit confirm connectors and then perform the cut. So you're gonna have two pieces here. Uh, so click out, 
who have the either side of the model. And usually what we're going to do is we're going to, actually, we're going to print this with the whole sides facing up. And then of course you have all your connecting pieces. So let's move out all the connecting pieces. So I'm just going to hold shift, select them all, missed one, and bring them over here. We'll come back to this in a moment. And we're going to paint either side of this. So we'll flip this. Actually reverse that. So the holes are on the bottom. And then we'll flip it right before we print. All right, so let's paint both of these. I won't have you walk, uh, sit through all of this. So what I'll do is I'll just paint it and I'll come back. Okay, so now that we're done painting, we're going to flip this. So in this case, we want this side facing our build plate. So we'll go to prepare, make sure we select the model. We'll lay on face or the F key, flip. Do the same thing here, flip. We'll slice again. Now it will print this side and have our holes facing up. And to print both of these will only take about, uh, about an hour and a half and we have four filament color changes.